Well, hello again. I don't know what happened there. The periscope just uh, it just went off suddenly, unexpectedly. I don't know why, but so here I am back again, um, talking about salvation. Hello, welcome. My name is Selma Edker. Here's my sign, Mrs. Selma Edker. I'm 68 years old. And this is my Periscope title. I'm here to chat with you, ask, answer any questions. Hello. Questions that you might have about my life as a Protestant missionary's wife. Are questions about faith, about Jesus. That's what we are all about, Norman and I. It's about sharing the love of Jesus with everyone. Am I happy with life? Oh, hi, Taylor. Yes, um, I am very happy with my life as a missionary. A uh, missionary wife, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, okay, Miguel. Thank you for, for coming on. So, um... Yes, I am very happy with being a missionary's wife. It is the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I just thank the Lord um, for joining Norman and I together. It's uh, It's been wonderful. In our old age, you might say, he's 70, and I'm 68 now, almost 69, and uh, God has blessed us so much, and it's a joy not only to have a spouse to love but together sharing the love of Jesus with the world so I appreciate that question and and um, any other questions you want to ask thank you for the hearts so I have been talking before Periscope suddenly stopped I was talking about Jesus and the way of salvation about being spiritually born again about my own experience and thinking I was a Christian when I really wasn't. And um, so there are, uh, seems kind of crazy to me, but it says on the internet there's about 4,000 religions in the world. So, okay, get straightened up there a little better. So, who, who do you think has started all these religions? Obviously, it's people, but what has motivated or inspired all these different religious groups to get started? Anybody out there know an answer to that? I have a scripture to read you that is an answer to that question, basically, and it's in the book of Revelations in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And it says, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, that's talking about being thrown out of heaven. In the beginning, Satan was a beautiful angel in heaven. And he was so beautiful that he got lifted up in pride and decided that he wanted to be God. He wanted to be worshipped. And so he tried to dethrone God, and he had a lot of the angels uh, believing with him, and so they were thrown out of heaven. And now it says he is the God of this world, but that is a God with a small g, because there's only one true God, the Creator. So... Satan has many different 
names or titles in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament it tells about Satan and this is just a few of the names that Satan is called he is the father of lies Satan is a liar it says he is the father of lies he is a murderer an adversary the accuser of God and man he's the tempter when people are tempted to do bad things, to do wrong things, Satan is behind it. He wants people to do wrong and evil because he is evil. He is a thief. And another name that says he appears as an angel of light to deceive people. So... Satan and everything that is bad is, is darkness. There's spiritual darkness and there's spiritual light. And Jesus is the light of the world, the Bible says. He came to bring light to men, to bring understanding, to bring salvation. But Satan is just the opposite. He is the great deceiver, and one of the ways he deceives people is by, by using pastors and preachers and teachers. They appear to people as if they are presenting the gospel message. They are deceivers. Satan is using them to deceive countless, countless people all over the world by telling lies, by teaching false religions, false doctrines. Satan tempts people to commit suicide by telling them, well, you're going to be better off. You won't have to deal with your problems anymore. Just go ahead and kill yourself and everything will be fine. You talk about deception. When a person does that, they end up in hell and they're far worse off than if they stayed here to deal with their problems and to seek God. God can help anyone if they seek him. Satan influences people to lie. Most people will say, oh, it's okay to tell a little white lie. It's not going to hurt anything. In God's eyes, a lie is a lie. And why do people lie? It's to deceive you. Satan is the author of deception. And anyone who lies to you is because they don't want to tell you the truth. Satan uses people to deceive others. Satan tells young people, oh, you don't want to go to church. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to think about God. Just enjoy your young life and go out there and, and do every kind of sin that you can find. Just have fun. Have a good time. You're going to live for a long time. You don't have to think about God. Satan is the author of all deceit, all lies, everything that is wicked and evil. All these false religions are started by Satan deceiving people. And he does that, as I said, he does that so that people will end up in hell with him. Satan still wants to be worshipped as God. He's never changed. He was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be God, and he still wants to be God. And do you know what is really sad? 
For most people in the world, he is their God, even if they don't know it. Because if you are not spiritually born again, if you are not a follower of Jesus, then Satan actually has control over your life. And I remember for myself thinking, when I first heard that, how can that possibly be true? It is a shocking statement when you don't understand it. But there is nothing in between. Either God is your father, your spiritual father, or Satan is leading you around. He is controlling your life, even though you think you have control of your life. But when you do anything that is, uh, if you tell a lie, if you commit a crime, anything you do, if you commit an abortion, Satan is behind it. And that is one of the greatest tragedies in America today. That American, so many American women think they have a right to kill their unborn baby. How is that possible? One of the lies Satan uses to deceive these women, and there's somewhere between 50 and 60 million babies that have been killed by their own mothers. Satan says, it's okay, it's your body. You have a right to do whatever you want with your own body. It's your choice. And like I said this yesterday on, on Periscope, it's astounding to me that women will convince themselves by listening to Satan that what, number one, they'll say, well, it's not a baby. It's only a fetus. Or it's my own body. I can do whatever I want with my own body. If it's your own body, why do you need to kill part of it? If it's a fetus, how does it then at some point in time turn into a baby? And if it's not a baby that you need to take responsibility for, why do you need to have an abortion and kill it? That is absolutely horrible. It's just another way the devil deceives people. And in saying that, it reminds me another title for Satan is destroyer. Satan loves to destroy life. He destroys it by deceiving these women, committing abortion. He destroys life by telling people, go ahead and kill yourself. And you won't have to suffer anymore with the problems in this life. Satan destroys life by tempting people to do outrageous um, things like driving extremely fast or doing daring stunts of some kind just uh, risking their lives for a thrill, they think Satan is actually trying to get them to kill themselves in so many different ways. By taking drugs, by drinking too much, people a lot of times overdose and kill themselves. Or they drink so much alcohol, they're destroying their body from the inside out. So many ways Satan deceives people. They think they're doing what they want to do. And all the time it is Satan controlling them, tempting them to do all the wrong things instead of seeking after God.
and in the end you will end up in hell if you are not spiritually born again and that is the real tragedy and that's what Norman and I want you to think about seriously think about your life it's your choice God gives everyone free choice God doesn't send anyone to hell God doesn't make people become spiritually born again he lets everyone choose their own way but there is only one way to heaven and that's another lie of the devil another way he deceives people is by telling oh there's so many ways you can go to heaven and I looked at um, most of the major religions of the world the majority majority of them teach that you can work your way to heaven you do good works you promote your religion you be good you do good things for other people and you'll eventually become good enough that God will let you into heaven it's another deceit of the devil there is no end to the devil's lies to deceive people to keep them from going to heaven not only that when you're spiritually born again going to heaven is not the only benefit of being spiritually born again of course that is your eternal destiny and that it's between going to heaven or hell why would you choose hell righteousness peace and joy <laughs> yes <laughs> my husband Norman sitting here and he knew what I was getting ready to say it's not only your eternal destiny in heaven when you're spiritually born again but it's the other benefits that you have right here on earth when God makes that spiritual transformation in your heart by the Holy Spirit there is a joy that comes from nowhere else and peace when you know that you are forgiven oh my goodness the Bible says then you have peace with God wouldn't you like to have peace in your heart I know some people just shove everything back they don't want to think about the things that condemn them or make them feel guilty they try to push it push it away push it down and just not think about it and that's why I think probably a lot of people drink and do drugs and all those kind of things or they just fill their lives every moment they can with having a good time anything to push away that guilty conscience but it won't go away on its own it won't go away you can't will it to go away it's only getting set free by the precious blood of Jesus that then God sees you as if you had never sinned when you repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior then you have peace with God peace and joy and a new purpose in life it's a wonderful thing so my friends uh, hasn't been uh, any chatting going on today so I hope at least that some of you have listened and that you will take to heart what you have heard that you will consider it that you will make a decision to seek after God and allow his grace to help you understand what you've heard and that you will read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament for yourself and ask God to help you understand because that's what he will do 
God knows if you're sincerely seeking him. And he won't turn you away if you are sincere. He will help you to understand. He's saying, come to me, child. Come to me. Turn to me. And you can be spiritually born again and have a new life. The Bible says you are then a new creature in Christ Jesus. You have a new life. You don't have to look at your old way of living and feel condemned anymore. Or even if you don't feel bad about anything in your life, even if you've had a, a good life and you don't feel like you have any problems, anything to worry about, it doesn't matter how good a life you've had or how good a person you are. That still doesn't get you into heaven. So that in itself can be a great hindrance to you feeling you need to make that decision to turn to God. If everything's great in your life and you're satisfied, don't let the devil deceive you into thinking you don't have to think about heaven and hell. I, I have said many times, if you don't make a conscious choice to turn to God and repent and be spiritually born again, then by default, your eternal destiny is hell. And that would be a tragedy. So, I say this with the love of God in my heart. That's the only reason that I'm here. Is that I want people, people's hearts and lives to be changed. And to have a, an assurance. You can be assured that you will go to heaven when you are spiritually born again and when you obey God and his teachings in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. All right, my friends, that is it for today, and I will be back tomorrow. Love you all. Bye-bye.